creates a child when well a mother creates a child who then becomes a mother in turn rigveda highlights this by saying in 10.72.4, Aditi comes from Daksha, but Daksha comes from Aditi. Daksha is thought of as Aditi's father. Punarvasu. Aditi's nakshatra is named Punarvasu. The sutra uses the word in the dual case because the nakshatra has two equally prominent primary stars, Castor and Pollux. These two stars represent Aditi and her eighth child, Martanda. He who was born from the womb of death. Martanda lives with his mother, unlike his brothers who dwell in their own nakshatras. Or one indivisible divinity, Aditi, taking multiple forms, Punarvasu. The word Punarvasu means again, Punar, exist, Vasu. This aptly conveys cyclicity, existing, dying, then existing again starting, finishing, and then starting again. The visual symbol for Punarvasu is usually a bow and a quiver. An arrow is shot from the bow, returned to the quiver, to be shot again in an unending cycle. Vata. This word indicates dry, dry, arid, stale and old things. Rebirth requires death. Thus Punarvasu requires Vata. This suggests the nakshatra's tendency to collect old things, perhaps hanging on to them, thinking that they still have potential to be reborn and utilized again. It also signifies a weakness for prematurely considering things old and boring before they have borne their fruit. Ardra. Ardra means wet. It is the opposite of vata, which means dry. When punarvasu functions effectively, it refreshes, granting rebirth to old things, recycling old things, topics and relationship into fresh, moist, healthy new entities. Summary The eternal and endless Aditi, cycle of life, Punarvasu, needs to wear itself out and become dry and old, Vata, so that it can reinvent itself, becoming fresh, moist and new, Ardra, once again. Interpreter. Punarvasu is most welcome, where fresh enthusiasm for new ideas is welcome, but unwelcome where a long time commitment and patient tenacity is needed. It can also keep one stuck in a repeating pattern of behavior. Each planet in Punarvasu tends to have pluses and minuses. The Moon and Mercury bring out the positive potentials of Punarvasu, signifying expertise and improving and fixing things, and bringing a sense of renewal and refreshed interest into things. Still, these planets also indicate easily being bored and distracted, getting stuck in patterns. Rahu and Ketu are more extreme than Moon and Mercury, Jupiter more mild. The more fixed planets, Saturn, Sun and Mars, signify inflexibility and excessive need for newness. Venus in Punarvasu brings out the Nakshatra's partnering nature and signifies significant interest in partnerships. It also tends to indicate multiplicity in partnerships. Life lesson. I would like to explore two, two important lessons learned from this sutra. The first is about how not to get stuck in emotional intellectual root, ruts. 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 The second is about how to seek newness without making yourself even more sensitive to oldness. Ruts occur when an undesirable emotion or thought keeps recurring. The sutra reveals that the reason these recur is because the flaw, vata, in them has not yet been improved, resolved and refreshed, ardra. The solution is found in the word aditi, non-division. If we do not polemicize the situation as a problem, we can experience it more accurately and discover something in it that is not problematic at all, but actually has the potential to create something desirable. Then we can reinvent or reincarnate the situation, Punarvasu, transforming defects into assets. By depolarizing desired and undesired, we reinvent our relationship to the problem 
and thus escape the rut. It is essential to realize that situations do not really need to be perfected, constantly improved, etc. Our situation as it already is can supply us everything we need. Next, the lesson on boredom. Punarvasu always wants things to improve, evolve and get better. Thus, actually, it finds flaws. This illustrates a basic problem. The more you look for excitement in life, the more you might discover how bored you are. What this sutra teaches us, however, is that boredom is an important part of the process of being excited. Boredom or vata, it is the raw material that becomes transformed into something juicy and exciting, ardra. Um, repeatedly, punar carries the, se carries the sense of forgiving our mistakes and loving us anyway. Uh, this is a, a footnote to the supplication hmm. because it said, May Goddess Aditi love us repeatedly. And then there is a footnote also to May the gods return to us again. May the gods return to us again implies that we have made some mistake that caused us to lose the gods' favor and grace. It implores Punarvasu to make our effort at correction successful. Hmm. Supplication May Goddess Aditi love us repeatedly. With Punarvasu, with, we strive to renew ourselves. May the gods return to us again, so we may again strive to please them by our efforts. Goddess Aditi is infinite and cosmic. She is the support of the cosmos and the foundation of all life. Let her increase and be nourished by Punarvasu. All gods adore her guidance.